for one week every May, the beautiful North Coast is the venue for one of Northern Ireland's most exhilarating sporting events, the International Northwest 200. Alistair Seeley is the man to watch on the right hand side, but look at that start from Dean Harrison and Martin Jetta. For 90 years, they've been racing on the closed public roads. This is the scene here at Fort Stewart and a glorious place. Heroes born. Oh! Back wheel off the ground for Michael Dunlop. How emotional will this be? History made. Incredible. Five wins in a day, Philip McCallum. And being chased home by Robert Dunlop. Homegrown stars created. It's a race which has attracted world champions. This man, this motorcycle, this victory salute. Seen record speeds. And Bruce Anstey nearly 210 miles an hour. And created famous rivalries. Celia and Irwin, no love lost here. Shoulder to shoulder at 200 miles an hour. This is not going to work. They can't get two through there, no. It's fast and it's frightening. Oh, oh it's on the grass, Steve! Oh, my goodness me. But it's absolutely fabulous. Oh, oh it's yes. It's jammed yes. him down Ooh. the inside. Welcome to the Phonicab International Northwest 200 in association with Nichols Oil. What a breathtaking backdrop for a truly special event. Over 100,000 people flock here annually for an unforgettable sporting experience. The Northwest always attracts some of the best motorcycle road racers in the world, and this year is no different. There's a truly star studded lineup. Here are some of the contenders. Alistair Seeley, the Northwest 200 record holder with 24 victories. He's had a win here every year since 2008. Peter Hickman from England is officially the fastest road racer in the world after breaking the TT lap record last year. Englishman Dean Harrison has won at the TT and the Ulster GP, but never at the Northwest 200. British superbike star Glenn Irwin is hoping to add to his three big bike victories in a row. His Kawasaki teammate, James Hillier, has been on the podium here six times, but never on the top step. The Johnston from County Fermanagh has a new team and is a previous three-time winner. And local hero Michael Dunlop is one of the fastest and most popular riders in the sport and every corner looks like a stunt rider. Well, the name Dunlop is synonymous with the Northwest 200. Michael Dunlop, along with his late brother William, dad Robert and Uncle Joey, have won an amazing 37 times between them in the history of this event. A remarkable family. And who would bet against Michael extending that incredible record this year? John, lovely to see you back here at the Northwest. Uh, you're making your comeback, I guess you can say. Are you pleased about that? Does it feel good being out on the track? Yeah, I was a bit apprehensive, a bit nervous, you know. I think uh, you wouldn't be human if you weren't, you know. But I've been chipping away under the radar as well, doing a bit of riding last year, Classic TT and Gutton and Macau. And, uh, last year I wasn't quite bike fit, if you like. But this year, you know, we're, we're, we're back in the system. We've been doing a bit of training, a bit of motocross riding. You know, a lot of miles on the note and on the big bike. Lot of various tracks in the UK and uh, yeah, the big, the big monkey off my back was yesterday really. I went into turn two, uh, Primrose. I was like, ooh, 
I don't went up through that fence again and after that I sort of put it behind me and uh, just got down to business, yeah. Twenty-five years here at the Northwest 200, and I know you're already running around trying to find the helmet that you're going to be wearing. Hopefully, that will turn up. But that's a long, long time to be coming here. You must have seen some incredible changes. I have. It's just the place has just evolved into a, a major, major event. Yeah, I mean, I loved it. I fell in love with the place. The moment I walked, you know, I drove my old Iveco truck, you know, the Muscabi rusty old van through the through the door in in 94 you know and the first thing that they said to me is we well, are very welcome here on you know and, and up on the north coast the north coast for the northwest 200 you know yeah we're packed in gravel you know we're in the corner somewhere there was me and the missus becky and uh, you know we were a bit naive a bit green and uh, but i wanted to dip my toe in to the world of road racing and, and become a successful road race and you know where better place to start than the northwest but it still has that place well the only place in the world where you're wheel to wheel at 200 mile an hour you know the tt you're on your own a lot of these tracks you know get spread out here it's a it's a proper drag race slipstream and uh, pretty pretty unique but uh, uh yeah it nearly ended me but a few two years ago but now we're back here for more i went through the speed trap on lap two 193.5 mile an hour which was really competitive for speed so you know i was like this is amazing you know i was like stuff was whizzing past i was like oh, you know it's really nice to be part of the challenge and, and the development of the bikes. And all the fans everywhere, you, everybody, that's all they talk about is an own, how's an own, how's an own, <laughs> how's a 650, how's a super, you know, so it's, uh, you know, there's lots of BMs, there's lots of Kawasaki's, there's lots of uh, Yamahas and Hondas out there, but there's only, there's only these, these two here, so an interesting bike, and uh, 650 will get there, uh, whether it'll get there straight away, I don't know, but uh, it will get there eventually. Now this unique circuit always produces some memorable racing. It's triangle in shape, almost nine miles long, and is renowned for its long straights between the towns of Port Stewart, Coleraine, and Port Rush. It finishes on the coast road, where races can be won or lost. Well, the weather has been fantastic all week, and it's perfect again tonight for the first race, the Super Sport. The sun is shining and there's a very light breeze. It's time to join our commentary team, Steve Parrish and Richard Nichols. And guess what? It starts with Alistair Seeley in pole position, Lee Johnston and Dean Harrison beside him. And what a front two rows, Hillier, Hickman and Dunlop. It is going to be fast and furious. Derek McGee, Paul Jordan, Davey Todd, the next row. Hutchinson, Cummins, and Jamie Coward, number 36. So it is six laps, the Tides Restaurant Super Sport Race, and it's always thrilling for this. Perfect conditions, we know. A little bit of a breeze. Who's going to get off the line as the lights go out? And they fire off. Uh, it, it is, is it uh, number 34? Seeley? No, it isn't. It's number 13 on the inside. Lee Johnson got away well, didn't he? But now he's been uh, blitzed. That started well, but now he's back to second place as they go up over the top of the hill and down towards York Corner with that man back in front. Oh, and look at James Hillier. Yeah, you wouldn't bet against Alistair Seeley off the line, but there is Hillier, number 37, right behind. On the inside of him is Lee Johnston. They're neck and neck as they come out of York Corner up to Mill Road Roundabout. And uh, look at this freight train of bikes. And will Seeley disappear? I don't think so. He's got a job on his hands. There's a full pack of proper competitive Oh, look, very early on, the proper competitive oh. riders right behind yeah, him. that was number 14 there, Daly Matheson. <laughs> yeah. On board with Lee Johnson. Look at the revs coming up on the screen there. He's over the top of the hill, and they head down towards Station Corner. Alistair Seeley will be trying everything to get through. They're absolutely flat out. Remember, the tyres aren't completely up to temperature. These bikes not as fast as super bikes. Some slipstreaming going on. I think that was James Hillier. 
Look at this, 150 miles an hour, and that's what the slipstream does for Lee Johnston and James Hillier. Oh, oh tremendous stuff. Look at that, over 14,000 RPM. We're doing about 173 miles an hour. It's about the top speed of one of these, but maybe a little bit more with the slipstream effect. Fastest part of the course, but they have got a bit of a headwind. On board with Davey Todd. That's Looking back at Connor. Yeah, Connor Cummins on the uh, Paget Honda trying to get back in the toe you can just see poor old connor can't really get his head under the screen he's very very tall that is a bit of an issue but he's really good on the brakes who is going to be the best of the breakers and lee. it is uh, it is be. no Hillier. look at that i thought lee johnston he probably thought he got that one done and dusted but james Hillier had other ideas i certainly did into the roundabout now tires fully up to temperature on board with lee johnston on the ash court yamaha r6 through the camber tires, they drop over the top there and head up towards Mathers Cross. And those lights flashing on there telling you to shift gear when they all start flashing, it's time to shift gear. And he's got the slipstream, so Lee Johnston has got past James Hillier now. Who's going to be best in the brakes? Does Alistair Seeley slot it into second place? But I'm going to say Lee Johnston on the inside, looking back from Davy Todd to Connor Cummins. Still got Connor in the slipstream right behind him, and he's tucked down as low as he's go. Gary Johnson, the man behind him, but here is your new race leader again lee johnston in front of james hillier look at this there's a freight train of about 20 guys all together at the moment so we now look back on the eha racing machine and it Here is comes Seely. yeah it is Seely, but also james hillier lights flashing oh, everywhere yes. but it is Seely down the inside into the mcavoy chicane second gear corner this is flicking it through right left and then getting on the power as early as you possibly can with a run down tailwind now the wind behind them and downhill look at lee johnston beautiful run from him through there the oh, lights flickering telling him to change gear he hasn't got any left <laughs> yes, and here is gary johnson looking back from davy todd on the ref reserves machine gary's a little bit injured but he's good on the brakes coming down into here lee johnston the 30 year old uh, so nice to oh, see him back oh, 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 oh. gary johnson up the slip road uh, you know, he's riding with a really badly injured leg, uh, badly burnt, we should say. He's in a lot of pain. And uh, you can forgive him, things like that. Just amazing that he's here. Yeah, anyway, he got in the slipstream and I think just lost his breaking point. But we're back with the leaders now. Alistair Seeley. This is the Yamaha machine that he's riding. He rode this bike, had took two wins here last year on this pretty much similar bike. Yes, he said they keep rebuilding it and changing the swing arms, changing bits and pieces, but it's like uh, Trigger's broom. <laughs> it really is. Dean Harrison's in the picture there as well. He's on the Kawasaki, as is James Hillier. So it's Yamaha first and second at the moment. Harrison at the back of this pack, he's due a win here. Lee Johnston, lovely to see him back on form and lovely to see Gary Johnson I think he's pulling it off. Yeah. yeah, I think he must be hurting. The Triumph, the lovely sound in Triumph machine. Right, here we go. We've got a little bit of a breakaway group. Just a touch, and I think just behind him is Paul Jordan doing a, having a good run in uh, fifth spot. James Hillier has been sort of very low-key but very relaxed and confident all through practice this week, and he is in a podium position at the moment. The lead, Dean Harrison. Jams it down the inside of James Hillier. Yeah, he does. And that is Paul Jordan and Michael Dunlop also in that pack behind, but they're dragging themselves back up to the leading pack. And Lee Johnston is dragging everybody along in his slipstream. Lee Lee, just, is he just watching and waiting? Well, I, I think they'll already be thinking about that last lap. We know what it's like down into Junior for Chicane. There goes Michael Dunlop uh, getting through there, the 30-year-old from Balamani. And as the slipstream does its work, Lee Johnston is dragging Alistair Seeley closer and closer. Oh, wow, wow, that's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? That station corner, one of the most important corners on the course, simply trying to get your power oh, down that's early been enough. Bold from Lee, tried to block that, take Sight. away Alistair Seeley's line, but it wasn't happening. And Gary Johnston's back out. He, he, I'm sure he just pulled in. He must have gone in for an adjustment. He must be a, had a problem on the bike rather than a pain in his leg. Yeah, well, he went through that chicane, didn't he? Paul Jordan, look at that. As James Hillier looks over his shoulder, and he can see Paul Jordan using those four bikes there, knocking a big hole in the air for him to close that gap down. I thought you weren't supposed to turn around. Don't uh, look behind you. Well, normally your visor blows off or something else, or your head blows off at these sort of speeds. Uh, look at this, trying to get in the slipstream there. Number 65, Michael Sweeney. Right, into the roundabout. Downshifting. 
here. We can see everything looking good. Temperatures looking good. We're, we're the data logging system as we ride with Lee Johnston. Lee Johnston must be thinking, is it my turn today? What can I do about Alistair Seeley? Where is he going to come for me? Now, I think. Well, Alistair Seeley will already be thinking about what's the best position to be in at what part of the course. It is the last lap, and I always think Juniper is the last chance. So there he goes past pretty late on the brakes. These two guys, similar in stature, I'd have said they're quite light riders. They're on virtually identical motorcycles, different colour, but they are the same model. Yeah, ideal 600 riders. And uh, Dean Harrison's not a big bloke either, so he's well suited to the small bikes as well. 81 degrees temperature, that's oh. fine. Oh, got in the draft, and you see all those it's lights so start flashing. Sudden, isn't it? Yeah, and that was when he was coming up towards the limiter, I would have said, as he gets in the slipstream, and it's so important. We've said it along many times. You've got to get your gearing just right so it's not on the limiter when you are in the slipstream. It, the, it's, it's cumulative, isn't it? The slipstream sort of tugs you, and it kicks you, and all of a sudden you get, like, the elastic effect, and it throws you at the bike in Yeah, front. it does. It can give you five easily, five or six miles an hour, no problem whatsoever, as they're trying to punch a hole in the air and the bike is doing everything it can. It's all about getting the grip and not going over too many bumps and jumps so you lose traction, but Seeley... Over the bumps and out in front. Yeah, moves over to the right-hand side. In fact, these two had a tum... A ta uh, they kind of right tangled here, yeah. right here at Metropole a few years back, I remember. They weren't talking so much at that point. I am riding with Davy Todd on the Milenko Paget machine. That's uh, number 36 right behind him, Jamie Coward from Midgley. Under the bridge and up onto the hill. Oh, oh that's such a shame, Paul, yeah. isn't it? Paul Jordan was having a brilliant ride. Absolutely brilliant. But that's his shame. So now there is just the four because it was five before Paul Jordan pulled out. And Lee Johnston bossing his way into the corner there. He knows that Seeley is going to give it absolutely everything in the next couple of miles. Gary Johnson giving it everything up to eighth place again now. It did a good job considering he went up the slip road and then had to stop and put his foot down. That's great. That's Neve. That's Craig Neve gone down. Goodness me, that's oh, a far that section. That rector cell did well, but this is where it's all about. We're coming up down to the ju bu Juniper chicane. Who's it going to be? Who's going to be the latest on the, on the brakes? Oh. He's right in the dust. He's oh. done it. He's through. He's late on the brakes. He's going in there. Is he going to get it stopped? No, he's going deep. Oh, he's got on, on the, the gravel now. So oh. Oh. No. Oh, God, Seely is down. Seely is down. Lee Johnston cannot believe what's going on. I'm sure he's lucky not to get clobbered there, but he took went in there too deep. Lee Johnston gets his fourth Northwest 200 win. He's just got to get through this final corner, and he's done it. Lee Johnston. We said he was back on form, and he's back on the top step of the podium. Let's hope Craig Neve and Alistair Seely now are okay. He looks very pleased with yeah. that, doesn't he? Good ride there from Dean Harrison, and there's confirmation of it. Lee Johnston, Dean Harrison, James Hilly. How close were they at the top? Michael Dunlop, Jamie Coward, Ian Hutchinson in six. What a race that was, and what a win for Lee Johnston. Lee, congratulations. How satisfying is that win at the Northwest 200? Oh, do you know what? I've had a bad few years, and it feels so good to be back with a team of people here that believe in me and built good bikes. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah just Sorry, get in, get in. I just feel proper comfortable, and my range is showing that again. So, yeah, chuffed a bit, chuffed a bit. And it all came down to the last lap, last chicane. I knew exactly where my breaker marker was, and if he come past, he wasn't getting stopped. Do you know what I mean? So I just thought, crack on, and fair play if he had him. But yeah, I knew there was something going to go on the last turn. I was thinking. Oh, right, and I tried to get the slipstream. I was really struggling to get the toe. I could only stick with him if I was staying in the slipstream. As soon as I got in the front, they just got straight back past the straight. So, you know, a matter of break as late as you can and carry as much speed through the turns. And I knew Alistair wasn't going to make the turn as soon as it started to back in. And I thought, he's going to cross the grass as a penalty there. <laughs> but no, it was good. I'm over the moon. Massive thanks to Silicon Engineer and all the lads. Mint, over the moon. Well, what a thrilling opening race. Lee Johnston with his fourth Northwest 200 victory.
Steve Flater, eight times Northwest 200 winner is with me. Can we expect more of the same in this the next race, the Super Stocks? I think so. Do you know, I'm all excited. We've seen Glen Irwin gaining in Covent all day long. We're going to have another local winner. But Peter Hickman in pole position almost uh, equaled the lap record this morning. I think he's going well. He's had one or two issues this afternoon, but you know what? It's the same as a Super Sport. The front two rows, it could be anyone. Will the riders who have been out already, will they have an advantage, whereas Hickman and Irwin haven't, haven't had a race yet? I don't think so. It's been a long, busy day. Thursday's always a busy day, and probably the least laps, the better. Well, this is it then, the Bayview Hotel and CP Hire Superstock. Six more laps of this nine and a bit mile circuit with Hickman on pole from Glen Irwin and James Hillier. Michael Dunlop and Lee Johnston, the winner from the last race, and Dean Harrison is going to be fast and furious again. Steve Plater's right, anybody could win this. Rutter, Cooper and Hutchinson all in with a shout. Yeah, it uh, should be another one. A lot faster, these bikes. Anyone that's been in the last race is going to have to adapt to these. It's Glen Irwin, first time out tonight. First time on that motorbike, first time on a super stock bike. What's he going to do at the start? Oh, he's Great. nailed it, absolutely nailed it. So there you go, number one, Glenn Irwin on the Quattro plant machine, absolutely steaming away. We're riding on board with James Hillier, looking back to Hickey, down to Peter Hickman. Long shadows in the evening, oh. so let's go. Oh, it's close, isn't it? And charging. Look, Glenn Irwin, as I said, first time out this evening, and yeah, brand new team and bike for him this year. Down the inside goes uh, Hillier. So all through there, nice and safely, we ride with Ian Hutchinson. Hutchie is uh, just still recovering from his injuries. He's kind of blowing the cobwebs, he says, out, but this man certainly isn't. Glenn Irwin had a dreadful start to the practice week as we ride on board with Peter Hickman, but going back to Glenn Irwin, really lost his confidence, but it's all come back to him so quickly. It's amazing how one practice session on a Super Twin restored his confidence like a turning on a switch. And speaking of switches, there's one in the slipstream now, isn't there? Turn that on and see what happens. Yeah, through station corner they went on board with James Hill, and he's straight past his teammate now. I think that uh, there's quite possibly that Glen Irwin was just a little rusty duck coming out first of a Hickman can hardly stay on the seat of that BMW. That's uh, so bumpy there. But, oh, three abreast now, and then two abreast, and then two abreast, and here comes Hickman. Oh, BMW power, that's a brand new bike. Peter Hickman is on the brakes on the inside. Is he going to squeeze his way through? Yeah. And he has. Oh, that's how you do it. Oh, and he runs wide. He's giving it back. Yeah, he has. Uh, Hillier goes back up the inside. He ran about on the dirty part of the track. So James Hillier in front at the roundabout. This should be some battle. Kawasaki leads BMW at the moment. Looking back from James Hillier. Let's have a listen to that. Beautiful. Oh, wonderful. It scrabbles for grip. Here we go. We have some race on Dean Harrison at the back of this pack, but I suspect he won't be for long. And again, Hickman's going down the outside. Is he going to do it? He, oh, yes. Look at it. It's just like being attached by a rubber band to the bike in front, and it just twangs you shut, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, incredible stuff on the inside. Is the Kawasaki. So he's <gasps> through again. Glenn Irwin, brilliant stuff through there. Really good on the brakes. I think he's now up to speed. Probably got those cobwebs blown out. He's been sitting around watching the other guys in the Super Sport race, but now he's in the thick of it. They're riding like this is the Super Sport race at the moment. I know it's only the opening lap, but they are right on it as Dean Harrison gets the draft and the place. And uh, now he's going to... Oh, <laughs> he is, he is looking to come back at him. They're really selling down. Right, Peter Hickman through the McAvoy. And again, listen. The yeah. rasp of that great big BMW 1000 machine and the speed is coming down again, just like the Super Sport. Glenn yeah. Irwin has got it back on the brakes, blocking a little bit. Is he going to run wide? Yeah, yeah, he is. Hickman's going to get him, and he has. Hickman dives through oh. on the inside. I don't know where Glenn Irwin went, but he didn't get in front. Yeah, I think he had a hickey elbow in his face, didn't he? Just about there. Yeah, so again, out of the uh, corner underneath the bridge. Tricky corners coming up now. Black hell, and oh. look at that. Peter Hickman was right in the dirt. They're spreading it all over everyone else. And you can see the way he's having to work to make this bike turn on the coast road. But he's uh, he knows his way around here now, and he knows how to win on this bike. Did it last year? Yeah, he did. And he won this actual race here last time out battling with Alice to see who's not in this class of course this year but these four have just broken away a tiny little bit and Dean Harrison just in front of James Hillier trying to break away and catch up with the leaders 
across the line at the end of the opening lap we're on board with Ian Hutchinson having a good ride Ian Hutchinson is I mean he's still uh, hasn't had a lot of laps this year he's uh, been through the meal with those leg injuries and uh, doing okay I would have said anyway we're still on this little battle there's Mickey Dunlop Michael Dunlop number three number 74 David just behind, Todd him. behind yeah. him David Todd from Cleveland just behind him as they flash through station corner and it's still Peter Hickman but I'm not sure if he's going to stay there because they are oh, oh, Dean oh. Harrison wriggling and fighting away trying to get past the Kawasaki 186 miles an hour that was we just saw him out with the front wheel up in the air and wriggling, wriggling around is it meant to do that every lap because no, it's, it's going to be too exciting and sometimes it happens when you're passing someone because you've got that turbulent air all around you and you just get alongside someone and it gets itself in a real wriggle Hillier on the oh, oh yes Hillier has gone up the slip road uh, Dean Harrison was going through anyway oh he's gone round it wasn't a slip road. he just went really wide he went to turn in there and there was nothing to turn into because <laughs> there's a motorbike there so Go. let's try and see oh no slowing for the chicane and he's back Ben Irwin uh, slots himself there in the second place. So look at the amount of room. Gap's gone back now. James Hilly has lost an awful lot of time by going really wide at that university corner. And Dean Harrison has gone backwards again. He came through there, but then Glenn Irwin got that draft past him. And uh, Dean's back in third place. Peter Hickman leads it as we go on to the coast road and Hickey is he making a break Steve uh, I don't know if he is actually but he may be it's fast so it's BMW leads Kawasaki leads uh, Kawasaki uh, um, camera under the bridge takes your breath away doesn't it yeah, has he got something up his sleeve he's uh, has gapped them a tiny bit we know how good he is around here that new bike he's loving it that's uh, going extremely well around here of course, this man or the man that we ride with, Dean Harrison, never won round here. I can't imagine why he hasn't, and he's surely going to happen sooner or later. He's definitely due a win. Could it be from here, from third place? I think Hickman is getting away from them. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. He is. And Peter Hickman, of course, the man that holds the outright lap record, lap five we're on uh, at the Isle of Man TT races. It's so fast over the coast road, isn't it? They just accelerate in no time at all. They're doing 120 miles an hour. Yeah, and there is uh, Lee Johnson, Michael Dunlop, James Hillier. They're in the second group now. Uh, unfortunately, oh, Hutch is such out. such a shame, yes. You can see he's still not walking comfortably. You're right, Richard. It looks like Peter Hickman has pulled the pin as such. He has now got... Oh, oh, he's down. Harrison does not fall off motorbikes. Dean oh. Harrison doesn't do that. Oh, that's the left-hander at university, and he's just tipping it in his tight. Oh. oh, yeah, just lost the whole bike, slid out from underneath him. I don't know if he's a bit of gravel on the inside. He was very tight to the curb. Maybe he, he touched was, the curb. He was clo closing, wasn't he? But yeah. <sighs> so we're on the last lap. Peter Hickman, if this bike runs right, he doesn't make any mistakes, and he's unlikely to do, has got his second Northwest 200 win. Brilliant stuff from him. He's ridden superbly. It's all going on down here. One or two back markers there. It's number 24 getting a bit of less than Andy Look Sanders. who's up into third place. It's a podium position for Michael Dunlop on the final lap. A little bit of uh, improvement there for Lee Johnston as well. But And into the final few corners. There it is. Peter Hickman. Brilliant through that final <laughs> chicane section. Number 43 getting past there. Stephen Dengen. And Peter Hickman being very uh, brusque with the back markers there. Uh, and they are going to hold Glenn Irwin up now, aren't they? He's come across them at exactly the wrong moment for him and the right moment for this man. There it is. Oh, Second it is. time of asking. But Glenn Irwin made up a lot of time. He's much, much closer. So he was fast over there. And it is going to be Michael Dunlop grabs third place. Oh, excellent. That'll give the local fans something to cheer for. Hickman, Irwin and Dunlop. The gaps don't look close, but that was a close race for six laps. You took control of that race and there was no looking back. Yeah, <laughs> we knew we'd been, we know I've been fast on the Supercell bike all week uh, for some reason. You know, it's a brand, brand new bike. Never even sat on it before until Tuesday and, uh, you know, BMW is doing a great job. It's a fantastic bike. It's worked straight out of the box and uh, I just wanted to get to the front as early as I could and just get my head down, you know, and get on with it. First ever race uh, on a ZX10RR super stock bike. To be truthfully honest, I was quite slow around station beginning of the race and Losing the slipstream and then at the end I felt I felt good. Uh, 
we could uh, we could start to start to get there. But yeah, Saturday this race is going to be tight. I thought he would walk this race, but I, I'm surprised we were as uh, close as the race could go. And so real on Saturday. I know you come here to win, and uh, obviously finishing third isn't isn't that satisfying. But uh, you had to you had to beat a lot of good guys out there to get on the podium. Yeah, it's for, first race out really, you know. So I haven't done much riding. That's first time the bike is, we've used this bike, so boys looked after well. So good. Brilliant result for all three men on the podium. Yes, and Peter Hickman, the top spot for the second time here at the Northwest 200. So a super, super stock performance by Peter Hickman. And Philip, what a great start to this year's Northwest 200. Yeah, we've great weather and great racing. But there was drama in the first super sport race, but Lee Johnson pulled off a magnificent win. Peter Hickman walked away in the super stock race, but it was a great race, and we had two locals on the rostrum. Glenn Irwin is back to form, and Michael Dunlop was on the third place. So two races down with two different winners and we have lots more to come. It's the ultra competitive Super Twins. So the Super Twins are out on the grid with Jamie Coward on pole, Michael Rutter and Derek McGee alongside. And uh, Glenn Irwin, number one there, Bonetti, Stefano Bonetti, the Italian and Christian Elkin. A few patterns on this grid, but they're mostly Kawasaki's and a lot of them are KMR Kawasaki's. Jeremy McWilliams, a little way down the grid. He had lots of problems in practice. He had a crash and then he had a breakdown, but we're going to see who gets off the line. Look at the tension there, and they're away. And it looks to me like Derek McGee gets a really good start there. And we ride with Glenn Irwin, who hasn't got a good start. There's a problem there already. He is slowing. There's just not, that bike is not working. What a disappointment for the number one bike. It's looking good for everybody else into your corner. These machines, twin cylinder, 650cc, and it is McGee that got away really good. And then, of Blimey. course... Steve, look behind. Jamie Jeremy Counter McWilliams. Oh, yeah, Jeremy. Stop. <laughs> oh, he's charged uh, through there from that third row. So brilliant stuff for him. But Derek McGee, who's had a brilliant start to the season, winning lots of national races. He's here at an international. Now we're on board with Stefano Bonetti on the VAS pattern. This is Christian Elkin in front of him, I think. And this is Derek McGee in front of Jamie Coward. There's a fraction of an advantage in the qualifying time for uh, Jamie Coward, but uh, hardly enough to put a fag paper into uh, the gap between first and second. Michael Rutter also very much in the mix. He's there on one of the uh, Van Farquhar KMR machines doing really good. But it, at the moment, it looks like Derek McGee. That is Rutter just getting past. Michael Rutter just going past. Jamie Cat. Oh, they virtually touch through station corner, which even on one of these, trust me, is about 135 miles an hour. <laughs> Knees touching. Ridiculous. Jamie Cat didn't want Michael Rutter to go by. He just didn't want that to happen. He didn't. <laughs> he stopped him from getting through, I think. But there they are side by side. These are virtually identical bikes power wise. Stefano Bonetti, as I said, a 45-year-old from Bergamo in Italy we ride with. Yeah, on one of the patterns, and look how quick it is. They are blistering rocket chips, these things. Yeah, one of the advantages the pattern seems to have over the Kawasaki, uh, which is most of the field, is it lighter. It's a fair bit lighter. It's a kind of a nearly a proper built race bike, whereas the Kawasaki is a, a modified road Ooh, bike. It's a great deal more. Three abreast, as always. Rutter on the far side. Jamie Coward here in the middle. And there goes Michael Rutter. Um, Didn't want that to happen before, but he couldn't stop it this time. Gets it stopped nicely this time through there. Jeremy McWilliams is in the pack. Jeremy McWilliams, it's got to be said as we ride with Carl Phillips, Jeremy McWilliams didn't have a brilliant uh, practice. Uh, neither of the sessions were good for him. Absolutely. He had a technical issue in the first one, and then in the second one, he had a tumble, a bit of brake fluid on his rear tyre, from what I understand. But it's side by side, neck and neck here. And that is Michael Rutter and uh, Jamie Coward. Coward. Well, you can just see the bumps again. Yes. Jamie Coward just trying to sit in that seat and he's trying to fire him out on every single bump as they go through the McAvoy chicane and then charge down the hill with a tailwind. But out in front, Derek McGee. Derek McGee got away well and he's trying to make the break, but uh, it's 
Blimey, that was close. It, very, very close. One person we are missing, of course, off the start line was Glenn Irwin. The bike just didn't seem to get going. So a technical problem, it seems, for him. And I think he would have been in with a chance of this race. Well, there's about six people in with a shout at the moment as we go round the corner and under the bridge onto the coast road in the evening sun. Jamie Coward, we're on board with. That's Michael Rutter just in front. I think it was McWilliams right down the front there who'd had a huge slipstream coming down into Metropole up through the corners here. They will get the sun in their eyes. The sun is getting lower and lower and this tricky part as they come over the top there it is right there where you really can't see a great deal. And Stefano Benetti on the pattern right up there, number 14. He did say before the start of this race that it would be a dream to be on the podium at the North. And he's going this way. I think he's going to be. Look at the speed that it has. It's very aerodynamic. As I said, it's very, very light. He's right yeah, up there. Right up it? there. Oh, he's made a bit of a muddle through the chicane there. And look at that. Poor old Derek McGee nearly ran up the back of him. And Michael Rutter also in the back of McGee. So Stefano Bonetti got it all wrong at the chicane there. That's allowed McWilliams to just get a little bit of an advantage. Michael Rutter at the back end of this now. And slightly wary, perhaps, through the next chicane as we go around the back of the uh, pits. There is Stefan Bonetti, number 16, but Williams has gone through. We saw him snaking into the corner. There he comes. The, the, the veteran, I guess you say, the 55-year-old, but he doesn't get any slower. That's Jeremy. At what point are you more than a veteran? Uh, well, I don't really know, but we're right with him right now. Look at those eyes focusing, looking right at him. He's shaking his head there. I don't know if he made a bit oh, of a Phillips mistake there. In, yeah. Well, you can't see from the outside. We'll never know what that was. He obviously didn't think he'd done the right job there. But uh, the right job is happening up front. Look at the speed of oh, this pattern. He's torn the stickers off him nearly going past. Stefano Bonetti takes the lead for the first time here at the Northwest 200. This lad has been coming in for about 16 years. McGee gets the slipstream also. Is he going to get in behind the pattern? Yeah, I think he, I don't know. Will he get a toe down towards University and do a braking job? I don't job? think you're ever going to get past that pattern because once you pull out, you won't have the speed to do it, will you? But they're side Ooh. by side now, and I reckon Bonetti is still going to hang in there. But Williams is doing his best to get three he's abreast again. He's got it. Oh, he has. The pattern's still got the speed. Look at that. That is quite incredible. He's been coming here 15 or 16 years, this fella. Would be lovely to see him on the podium. We're riding with Jamie Coward. He's probably just sat here thinking, you boys can sort this out among yourselves. He said before the start, he said in practice that he expected to be this quick, didn't he? He did, yeah. Michael Rutter just snuck through there as well. So we're, there's our freight train. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. All in the bunch. I think that's Elkin at the back of the pack. So Stefano Vanetti using the horsepower. Why wouldn't you? Use whatever you've got. Speaking of... Uh, veterans as you were about Jeremy Williams Michael Rutt is one of those as well be nice to see him on the podium as well would Michael no he's a spring chicken at 47 I think but here we go Ste don't bother Stefano no, don't just look it. in front just keep your head down Derek McGee we're on board with right now into the breaking zone at Mathers Jeremy was going oh, in there hot Jeremy. Oh. Oh. Oh, the oh. The oh. No, he's down. Oh, Jeremy, you, you're Steve the veteran. You are the one that shouldn't be doing things like that. Lucky not to get hit. He was too late on the brakes, trying to get sideways. Maybe now we'll be thinking he should have gone up the slip rope. We ride with him there. Oh, there he goes across the grass. Once he's on the grass, he was down. No, I closed my eyes because I really thought that he was going to get hit by the, the guys behind him. He was so lucky with this. What an appalling uh, weekend he or week he's having so far. Poor old Jeremy McWilliams. So he's down and out on the KMR machine. But this fella is up and away. Stefan, I mean, I suspect that's given him a better lead because <laughs> it was a bit of a commotion other, going on. Yes, they've all had a little trip up and he's uh, cleared off. He, that might have broken the toe enough for him not to be troubled by the others anymore in this race. Quite possibly uh, that you really need to be about 40, 60 foot behind someone to get in that slipstream, but on board with Jamie Cow doing a great job on the KTS machine. Uh, a, a lad that uh, is fairly confident for this race, so he's, uh, he's now got to try and chase that fast pattern down. But in qualifying, his advantage was seven thousandths per second or something. Nothing is it? Nothing in it. McGee tips in second, then Coward, then Rutter, then Christian Elkin, number 18. Long shadows and low sun means uh, this next trip over the coast road could be difficult as they come up Black Hill. They get the sun right in their eyes. 
Yeah, those, as I said, twin cylinder machines, somewhere around about 100 brake horsepower. Not many people tell you exactly what they've got. They all try and keep it a secret. They start life at about 65 brake horsepower and they get tuned immensely. An awful lot of work you can do on these bikes. You can change the forks, the brakes, the swinging arms and that type of thing. Jamie Cowell, he's, he's done it. He was closing it in the slipstream. He's alongside. Oh. It's an outbreaking competition now. McGee's got it. Oh, oh, slip road. Slip road there for McGee. Oh. Everybody's making mistakes tonight. Yeah, now he didn't stop and put his foot down, so I think there's a penalty coming. For, oh, there it is. And there really wasn't much, nowhere much <laughs> to go. But unfortunately, you're not allowed to just come straight back on the track. I don't think stopping. you're allowed to. St he was out of the box. I mean, he was never in the box. So where no. would you stop? Well, at the end of the pavement, probably. <laughs> That's fair. You're not supposed to be on the pavement either. But anyway, this is how close this is. No one's giving an inch or a quarter here. I think he was going too fast to stop. Yeah, quite possibly. So, Stefano Bonetti is the one that isn't making the mistakes at the moment. He's looking good up front, isn't he? Actually, has this way. Oh, oh McGee. Derek. Derek McGee was on the curb there. He's ended up going down into pit lane. And he's got too oh, wide. Just, what was he doing? He's trying too hard, isn't he, to yeah. make up for the last mistake. That's just the wrong thing to do yeah on the last lap now Stefano Bonetti is he gonna be able to Jamie Cowd has closed him down a lot but you watch that pattern punch out the corner and it has done as uh, we look back from Carl Phillips machine that's the rear suspension working overtime on the bumps now over the coast road can Jamie Coward close in on the pattern we know it's not so handy over the coast road and we know that Stefano Bonetti is not as quick over this section as some of the other guys he's not doing a bad job there but Jamie Coward didn't make a lot of time up and that pattern will punch away again down the straight realistically he's just got to make a good job of the juniper chicane Jamie Coward is trying to break as late yeah. as he possibly do. What can Not he do? But close, I is he? No, if Benetti gets through here cleanly, I reckon he's got this done. What a result that would be. He's done Surely it, Surely the first Italian to ever win around here. Stefano Benetti is writing a page in history at the Northwest 200 International for himself and for Italy. He's going to be the first oh. Italian to win a race here. Oh, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Poor old Jamie Cowan couldn't make it up. Good second for him really and right I see Jamie yeah. and Michael Rutter comes in third well <laughs> who'd have thunk it eh James Chalk Horst Saiga and Francesco Caringa round out your top six but it's Stefano Bonetti's day w what does it mean to you to, to win your first international road race this is a massive achievement for you what does it mean to you to win a race international it's a great objective for you it's better than winning the lottery uh, it's better that uh, than uh, to win uh, the, the, the the lottery, uh, but he is uh, a two times a European Championship and uh, hill climbing, so he is very fast. His problem is uh, is no money, no sponsor, and uh, but uh, this time uh, was enough to, to win. You were riding so hard, well. probably the best I've ever seen you ride. Did a fantastic job. There's only one thing that beat you there, mate. That was horsepower. Yeah, it was. Uh, I had to work me work me knackers off for that then. But uh, yeah, we're. Uh, I, I knew uh, if I get in the tour, not last or last lap and lap before, and just uh, I knew I could get with him and uh, for, for, I was hoping to force him into a mistake or into like a thing. But unfortunately, it just didn't work out. But I'm really over. I'm over the moon to be first Kawasaki home and to be competing with him, Pat. And it's uh, it's good, really. Michael, congratulations uh, on your 33rd podium at the Northwest 200. Oh, thank you. It was, uh, it was, I'm glad to get over it. You know, they're just lunatics. They are. They're just like <laughs> it's um, hard racing. That is. That's the hardest racing I've done. It was an eventful race, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, uh, I tried to got mixed up with different people, crashing different places, flying out of the handlebars, and it was just uh, it was chaos. Um, and then the, I don't went down the last corner there. That was just I just thought no way they're going to make that, and, and he didn't. <laughs> So some memorable celebrations and a little bit of history at the Northwest 200. From all of us here, it's bye bye. Oh, it's been